and welcome back to Top 10 Best N64 Games of All Time. In this list, we're going to talk about the best N64 games of all time. Now, this is my opinion, but my opinion is correct, and if you disagree, uh -huh, you're just biased and you haven't played them like I have. Let's get into the list. Coming in at number 10, we have Pokemon Stadium. If you haven't played this game with your friend, knowing that they got to attack first, and they're definitely going to beat you now, then you don't know what it's like. Man, I remember hours of just going, Charizard is the one to go, and wanting Charizard to be the one to win, and then getting defeated because your friend chooses something that can fly in the air, even though Charizard can fly too, or an enemy that just digs under the ground. It's super lame, and you know you're lame. I'm looking at you, George. That's right. Now, coming in at number nine, we have Mario Kart 64. Now, if you're saying Mario Kart 64, why is it only number nine? That's because my family has ruined that game forever for me by either crashing into me in the battle mode repeatedly until I don't even get a chance to move, uh, thanks Michael, or my sister uh, who likes to drive around and cheat on the Wario map. Yeah, I'm talking about you, you cheater. You go right over the ledge, you know the jump, I get the jump sometimes, but I don't always get it. You're the reason people don't like playing that one. Coming in at number eight, we have Turok. Now, if you haven't played Turok, uh, allow me to explain. You're like a Native American guy with dinosaurs everywhere, and then you get like bow and arrows with explosives, and then you just start getting guns, and then the dinosaurs are from the future, and they have lasers armor, and things like this, and you get like, it's, it is a really addictive game, I remember playing this and going, why does nobody talk about this game? People need to talk about it more, so I will. And here we go, coming in at number seven, we have Kirby and the Crystal Shards. All I know about this one is if you get the rock one and you get the lightning one, you shoot the little rock with lightning. This game's addictive. And I just remember sitting back and watching my sister play this game and just not really understanding it, but watching how much fun she was having with it. And you know what? If somebody's having that much fun with the game, it must be good. And I also like that Kirby just eats everything. I never get the part where you jump and then you get the cake. I always miss it. That's that's mine. But that's why it's at number seven. Coming in at number six uh, is going to be Mario 64. And I know a couple people are going to be upset about this one, but allow me to explain. Um, it's kind of boring just jumping through the things and sliding down on your butt and jumping up and down and hitting something. A lot of these games have way more attack strategies and things like this. It's cool that it's open world and you can move around and you can go wherever you want. But sadly, I just don't find playing as Mario that much fun. He's kind of like generic, boring character. You know, if you pick Mario, you're probably the person who also just gets the generic character face in the beginning of Skyrim. So take it. And coming in at number five, we have The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. And I know some people would say, wait a minute, um, what about Majora's Mask? Majora's Mask is definitely a better, sorry, I only played this one. And I never picked up Majora's Mask because everyone talked about how difficult and hard it was. All I know about Ocarina of Time is you could spit on that ocarina. And that's why I thought it was really good. Also, it's just fun destroying everything as Lainey going, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's why it gets the number five spot. Also, there's like a glitch to get. Coming in at number four, we have Star Fox 64. If you know anything about this game, you know, do a barrel roll. Or, ah, oh, Fox, I'm going down. Or, ah, oh, Fox. All I remember is on the first mission, you can go through a secret uh, little like a uh, waterfall and then you fight the crocodile dude in the mech suit. All I know is that you do a barrel roll, you shoot things, and then when you get hit, it's like, meh, 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 meh. and then Fox, or Wolf, whenever he shows up, he would be like, meh, Fox, it's time for us to bully you. And I'm like, Wolf, you better hope you're never added to Smash Bros, because I will clap you. Do you understand me? Anyway, that's why it's at number four. And at number three, we have GoldenEye 007 for... Let me just, let me just explain this game. This game was, first of all, one of the coolest stories chopping people if you've never played this with your family i urge you to get this game and play it that you will know the true horrors when you try and go into the bathroom stalls and your sister has put nothing but little proximity mines there or when you're trying to <laughs> when you're trying to play the main mission and you run out of ammo or you're trying to be stealthy and all the enemies just they just keep showing up or when you're playing it and somebody grabs the golden gun once they grab the golden gun, it's pretty much game over because it's a one tap and the guns kind of lock on to you. But you know what? There's something fun about the first Call of Duty, pretty much. That's what this was. 
shooting your friends, playing against your friends. It was awesome. Also, slappers only. Don't at me. It's insane. And coming in at number two, we have Mario Party 3. All I remember about this game is putting that computer on the hardest difficulty, he will win. He will cheat. He will win those stupid end game prize game things. This game is what I remember playing with my family the most because my family might not have been good at Mario Party or Mario Kart and they might not have been good at Smash Bros, but they could play this one at least. And this one was fun and I remember my cousins, a uh, cousin in particular, his name was Guso. Uh, he would hit the start and stop button repeatedly while you were doing mini games. He would unplug your controller. He would turn off the game. He was probably the biggest cheater ever. And still to this day, he's one of the coolest people I've ever known. And that's why Mario Party 3 gets our spot at number two. And coming in at number one, it's Super Smash Bros for the N64. Was there any real competition here? This is the game that used to give me goosebumps turning it on, waiting for that opening screen, waiting for the hand to pick up one of the characters and drop them. This was the game where it brought all of your favorite Smash, all of your favorite N64 characters, put them on the table and said, fight. And it was just great to watch it. Could Fox actually give it like, you know, punch, punch, kick, kick. And then Mario with that headbutt, Luigi with that uppercut where you hit the ding and the character catches on fire. Kirby eating somebody and then jumping off the map with them. Or Kirby's up B that could spike people instantly into the ground. This game has so much, it's just, it's just the best. It is the best and it just brings back so many memories of playing this game. Me playing Yoshi as a young kid, only doing B, hoping to eat somebody and poop them off as an egg off the map. This game deserves number one and I thank you all for watching and I can't wait to see you in the next video. Peace.